All right, you can turn your Bible to John chapter 14. There's been a big controversy stirred up because I said that Jesus Christ is God the Father, and I see people going back and forth in the comments, and, and uh, friends of the ministry and things are even disagreeing with me and saying, Brian, you don't know what you're talking about. Jesus is God the Son. He's not God the Father. Um, let me clarify what I'm trying to say by this whole thing. Okay? We're going to read John chapter 14 because this thing shows what's going on. Uh, I think better than any, any other chapter in the Bible. I mean, and there's so many verses that we can go over here. Um, but I think it's important. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. Okay? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye, uh, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Here's where it gets interesting. Okay? Now you can make the argument up to this point that Jesus and God could be two separate you know, aspects of the divine Godhood, or however you want to say it. You know, I mean, you got to be real careful with this whole doctrine of the Godhead, you know, people call it the Trinity, and you go, well, the Trinity is not in the Bible. I know all that stuff, okay? But it's, it's, you know, God is three in one, all right? That's what the Bible teaches here. But here's where you got to be real careful, because there are so many different extra-biblical words that are coming into play with people and stuff like this, and they're, they're introducing all this stuff. Well, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. Let's stick with what the Scriptures say, all right? Jesus is talking here like Father and Him are, are there, but they're separate, is what it looks like so far. But now check this out. He says, that, you know, I have seen Him. Look at this, verse 8. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Hmm. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Is Jesus Christ the Father? Yes, he is. You say, but it doesn't make sense with the other. We're going to get to that. Why does this not make sense to our puny little minds? Give you a little hint there. All right. The Godhead is purposefully set up so that we, with our finite little minds down here, we can't understand it. See? This is part of the thing of one of the mysteries. We've talked about that in another study. But here, here's the whole thing. Does the script, do the Scriptures teach that Jesus is the Father? He just said He was. So, you don't say, well, yes, but I can show you plenty of other scriptures. We're going to look at the other scriptures here in this chapter that say about Jesus and God, it looks like that they're separate. All right? We're going to look at those scriptures here as we continue. But you can't abandon this statement that Jesus Christ makes here. So your doctrine cannot be based on, well, I found, let's just say, 200 verses that say make it look like Jesus and God are separate. And you say, so then I'll just ignore this one right here where Jesus says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. So let's ignore that one because of the other 200. No, 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 no. That does not work. All right? You look for even one verse of Scripture, and there's more than this one. You look for one verse of Scripture where Jesus Christ identifies himself as the Father, and that proves that he is God the Father. It's right there. And of course, what do we see? Well, if you understand the Godhead from Scripture, Jesus Christ is the physical body of the Godhead. God the Father is the soul. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit. Okay, you understand that? Or you could say the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. That's the Godhead. So if you're looking at Jesus Christ, 
he says, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. The Father's right there inside of him as the soul. The Holy Ghost is right there inside of him as the spirit. Okay? We have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. Man is made in the image of God. And again, I've talked about this thing in plenty of other studies. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, excuse me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, uh, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit there, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But, he, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He wasn't in them yet. Okay, this is before Jesus died on the cross. So the Holy Spirit comes upon them in Acts chapter 2. You see that there. You know, again, understand the, the transitional nature of going from Old Testament to New Testament. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. Again, you say, well, it's like two different things there. Don't get ahead of me. Verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See? You see the Comforter there, it is the Holy Ghost. So again, we're seeing the Godhead here. We saw it in verse 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Right? So what do you have there? Well, God breathes into man's nostrils the, the breath of life. The Holy Spirit comes and leads into all truth, and Jesus is the door. He's the way into heaven. So you see the Godhead there. So what the Bible teaches, and this is very difficult for us to understand as people, as mere mortals, you know, the Bible teaches that there are three aspects to the Godhead and that they have different things that they can do, but yet they're all one in one body. You see, but, but, but there are scriptures. I know, I know, but you see, you're getting ahead of me again. Let's continue. I'll show you what I'm talking about here as, as we continue. Let's look at the scriptures. Um, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. None as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. You say, well, how is that possible? Is it things... Keep with me. Verse 29, And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that the, I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Okay, now you say, well, see right there, he can't be God the Father, because he's going unto the Father. How does this whole thing work? Well, if you watched my mysteries study, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. First Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? Now, it's very important to understand this because 
the main issue here is an issue of pride, of believing what the Bible says versus saying, you know, you kind of line up on these two different sides, two different camps, and you say, well, I believe that Jesus is God, and but he's not God the Father, um, and I believe, you know, this, and I believe that, and you're fighting against each other, and it's like, wait a second, what if the scriptures teach both? What if the scriptures are saying Jesus is going to his Father, Jesus is praying to his Father, and in the book of Revelation, he, you know, the lamb that's slain goes up and takes the book off out of the hand of the one that's sitting on the throne, you know, and you're going, you know, I, okay, I don't get it. That's the point, brethren. That's the whole point. Great is the mystery of godliness. It's a great mystery to us. But, but I want to know. I want to be able to be definitive on this thing. It's not going to happen. Our minds cannot fathom the complex nature of God, the God of the universe. I mean, do we really want to be able to understand everything about our God? Wouldn't be a very uh, big God. Wouldn't be a God worth worshiping, in my opinion. Go back to Isaiah chapter 55. I'll show you what I mean. Back to the Old Testament. And this is just going to be a real quick little answer thing, too. I mean, don't get all excited here. Um, well, you didn't cover this and you didn't cover that. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to answer this thing fairly you know, quickly. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Call ye upon him while he is near. Hmm. I just had to put that in there because, you know, I guess that means believe upon him while he is near. <laughs> Uh, no, it means call upon Him. Okay, uh, whenever sinners need to get in contact with God, they don't just formulate things in their own minds. All right, they call. You know, when you need help, you call for help. You know, some people are just rather stupid and they can't figure these things out. But, uh, you know, call. What does call mean? You know, call is such an archaic word. I mean, it, Elizabethan English or something, apparently. We can't figure out what call means. We're going to have to look that word up in the dictionary. <laughs> if you're that brain dead, well, then I feel bad for you. Verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Still true today in the New Testament. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm glad that I have a God that I worship that I can't figure out. The reason I say that God, or excuse me, Jesus is God the Father, is because Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. So I can't say, well, I'm just going to ignore that verse and I'm going to go with verses where Jesus is praying to God the Father and he says I'm going to go to the Father and things like this and and stuff and and you know because I got to make the Bible fit my understanding. It's pride. That's what it is. People call me prideful because I take a stand and it's unpopular. I take a stand because the Bible says it. All right? And if it makes me popular or unpopular or whatever, well, I don't really care. So, Brian, people are making fun of you. You're discrediting your ministry. <laughs> like I care. I mean, my word. You know, I want to stand before the, the Lord someday, the judgment seat of Christ, and that's where I'm going to have to answer. And if his book was wrong or something, I was going to say, well, I just follow what the Bible said, Lord. Sorry about that, you know. Should have given me a better book or something. I don't know. Don't believe that that's going to happen. But Romans chapter 11. Because there would be people who say, oh, you went back to the Old Testament to prove things. Okay, let's go to the New Testament, Pauline Epistles. Although I guess if you're one of these hyper-dispensational wing, nut, hyper wing nuts, Romans 11 is for the Jews, and Romans chapter 9 through 11 is for the Jews. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, good night. Um. Romans chapter 11, verse 33, we'll start there. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, 
or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. You say, Brian, you're rather stupid. Amen. You're rather ignorant. Amen. Uh, you're, you're not really, uh, you don't really know a whole lot, do you? Well, compared to the Lord, uh, absolutely not. All I know to do is just believe an old book here that's changed my life, and I've seen it change other people's lives. That's all I know how to do. You say, well, you can, you know, but you need to be able to explain everything in it. Well, then I would be God. I'm not God. And this book, Jesus calls himself the Father. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. I'm in the Father, and the Father's in me. But how does it work out? Brethren, you just got to believe it. Okay? You can't, let's not form two different systems here and say, you know, and say, well, I believe Jesus is God the Son. Okay, then show me that in Scripture. Show me in Scripture where it says, where Jesus calls himself, I'm God the Son. Okay, there's one God, God the Father. And Jesus Christ says, He that hath seen the Father hath seen, or he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Jesus is the body, God is the soul, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. You say, well, how does it? How do they split up then? How do they get, you know, where you have God's on the throne and Jesus has taken the book out of his hands? I have no idea. I have no idea. You know, when we're standing there, if you're saved and we're standing there, you know, in formation or whatever else, you know, and, and we're watching the thing happen when we get raptured up, I'll say, I'm going to elbow you and say, see, I told you, you know, <laughs> or, or that's how it worked. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You know, we'll know when we get there. Right? I, I, oh, but that, that just, oh boy, I don't know if I could take a stand like that. Um, I just believe the book, and I suggest you do the same.